Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here this morning for the camera. I got a, kind of an unusual thought this morning. I'd say it's more testimonial, but it is going to be addressed to certain people. I'm just going to read one verse. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this morning. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to preach your word. I ask you to anoint my lips of clay, anoint the ears of those who will hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell my message. It is now beginning to look like Christmas. It is now beginning to look like Christmas. Let me explain why I'm calling it this. I'm sure there's people out there who agree with what I'm ready to say or even experiencing what I'm saying. You know, I have 62 years of age. As you probably know, I've had all kinds of Christmas experiences. I've had Glad experiences, glad Christmases. I've had some very sad Christmases, like the Christmas of 2007 when my wife Cindy, late wife Cindy, was in the hospital in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I was hoping we'd be able to get out of the hospital before Christmas Day, but we didn't, and you know that just messed things up in some ways for me, but even so, thank God that, you know, it was still wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. And believe it or not, I even had a mad Christmas, 1994. I won't go in details. Uh, I, don't know, I was slandered in a newspaper. I'll just say that because I don't even like talking about it now. I just rather forget all about it. But anyway... <clears throat> I, uh, every year is so different. And this is one of them. This is, I'm just now beginning to feel like, it's, look like Christmas. You know, I've been thinking that for the past, from 2015 to 2020, every year I'd be out ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. But I resigned it recently. And because I have resigned it, it just suddenly, you know, I can't blame the trials of my life for it not looking like Christmas because I've had them back in those years too. And it, it still didn't affect that, that, that momentum. It made, I'll tell you what I often thought was funny. Some of those years between 2015, 2020, everything was so Christmassy. And then on Christmas Day, of all things, it wasn't much of Christmas at all. That's the truth. The best Christmas so far since my late wife's Sharon passed away in 2015 has been the Christmas of 2018. Whenever I went over, I went over to the park in uh, Petersburg. I didn't know that they still have it up. <laughs> all the lights and everything. I went there and I visited and and went over, I wasn't the other way around, but I went over to Jim, Brother Jim Hawk's church. I was going to leave him something there. Well, he was there. I had a good Christmas that year with the Hawks. Totally unplanned, totally sporadic. That's going how it's going to be for me this year. I have no plans. I'm just letting the Lord do the plan. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delight in his ways, though he fall. He shall not only be cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I'm just trusting the Lord. He'll make he'll give me a good day according to his plan. I have a couple things in the back of my mind. I mean think about driving somewhere, but that just depends on uh, how the next couple weeks go financially. But anyway, enough on that. It is now beginning to look like Christmas. It's just now beginning to look like Christmas. 
Sad to say there's people right now, they lost a loved one, whether a husband, a wife, a child, a grandchild, maybe a mother or father, <coughs> sister or brother to death this year. I've been through it. I've been there several times. As far as with wives and my parents. So I can understand some things. And for you all, the real reason for the season is not the presence. You know, I don't even know, remember, I'm getting to the point where it don't even bother me if I don't get a present. It don't bother me if I don't get a card. You know, I, I, I don't even give out that many Christmas cards. Often what I'll do on the day of Christmas or day, a day or two before Christmas, I'll start sending out a lot of text messages and a lot of emails. But as far as cards, I, I'm trying to think the last time I gave one. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Just so busy and a lot of times financially kind of strapped. It's, it's not that I don't care. In fact, I, I, I know years I've given out. I mean, there's been some years I've given three or four hundred out. There's other years I didn't give a single one out. But regardless, I, uh, it's just now beginning to look like Christmas. It's just now. I'm just now catching that atmosphere. You know, here it is, what, the 10th of December, and I'm just now realizing we're in the Christmas season. I'll tell you something today. Why I like Christmas, it's about Jesus Christ when he came into this world. i tell you, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believe him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 It is when God commends his love towards us that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's when he sent him into the world. And he dwell amongst us. <clears throat> the other day I heard this story. I've heard it before and I think I've even shared it. He was playing on BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. It was one of Paul Harvey's old stories. There was a man, he said, he wasn't evil in the sense of what we most associate evil men with. I believe by nature we're evil. I believe we're born in sin and trespasses. As King David said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. No, he wasn't born out of wedlock. What it was, he was born with that sin principle, with that sin nature, that, that part of him that, that will go astray at birth, speaking lies. But this morning, because man was sinful, Something had to happen. This man, once again, wasn't evil in the worst sense of the word. He was basically a moral man. His wife and children were going to a, a late night service on Christmas Eve. He told them, listen, I just can't buy this God becoming a man and dwelling amongst us. I'd be a hypocrite if I'd go to church tonight. So he didn't. <clears throat> While he was at home, he kept hearing a thumping sound on his house and his windows. You know what happened? He looked outside and there was a bunch of birds. It was a very windy night. It was very cold. I've noticed this. This has been a very cold season physically and climactically. I hope we're not that way in our hearts. But this is what I'm ready to say. He, as he was there inside, he went outside. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll open up this barn and I'll try getting these birds to come in. And he did open the barn up. 
Every time he'd head towards them, they would fly away. He was trying everything in his power to get the birds to go into the barn where it be not, wouldn't be as windy, where it would be warmer for them. As he went into the barn, he tried his best to get them in. Every time he'd come near them, they'd fly away. and fly away from the barn. Soon he became a little irate at the birds. Finally, he just said, Oh, I keep chasing these birds off. Oh, if I could only become a bird and dwell amongst them so I could lead them into the barn. As Paul Harvey would say, and now for the rest of the story, that man realized the truth of the incarnation of Christ. That man now realized why Jesus came into the world. Because, see, he came in the world for you and me. It may not seem like Christmas this year. It may be because of some Things in the news that's disturbing you. It may be because of family troubles. I talk about the death. How many have gone through a divorce this year? How many people have gone through other heartaches this year? And Christmas is not Christmas to them. You know what? I think I'm going to make the rest of the season in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, friend... If you don't know Jesus, why not receive him today as your Savior and Lord? For as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even as many as believe on his name. Recognize that your need, that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Repent of your sins. Let's have godly sorrow for your sins. Recognize that Jesus both died and lived and rose again. Recognize he's the only way and by faith receive him. God bless you.